All right, you're watching the uh, 17th best show on the entire internet. This is The Tech. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. This, that felt like a very NPR beginning. Uh, good to see you guys out there in uh, wonderful tech land. Thanks to Vivis, our sponsor. Their night series of battery packs ranges in size from 6,500 to 13,000 milliamp hours. The night version 3 also has a stand so you can watch stuff and charge it at the same time. Click on the screen for more information. We're going to PDX land. You know what? Let's go ahead and talk to uh, Ed from Sapphire right now. But first off, I want to say thanks to Ed from Sapphire and Josh from Fractal. Fractal and Sapphire have uh, sponsored us to go out to PDX land and basically play video games. We're really going to be working, but we're going to play some video games too. And Wendell's going to be there. So PDX is going to be awesome. And now enjoy the interview uh, with Ed from Sapphire. Uh, Ed, first off, thanks a lot for the uh, you know for ho hooking us up with the sponsorship. And th thanks for what you guys are doing for the community. It's, it's good to see you... Uh, at all these different LAN parties. And we're going to try to uh, bump into each other all over the place around the country. So you're looking forward to uh, PDX LAN? Always looking forward to PDX LAN. It is a total blast. You, you're mm -hmm. going to have so much fun. Now, I haven't been. How, how, how big is PDX LAN compared to some of the other LANs you go to? PDX LAN is one of the larger LANs I attend. It's about 500 people. Yeah. And Matt does an amazing job, though, of keeping this LAN feeling like that... 10 people in a garage. Remember those days when you had 10 of us would get together, we'd be in somebody's garage and big yeah. fans with the garage door open praying we didn't overheat the computers. It feels like, well, except it isn't that hot. It feels like that when you're at this LAN event. There's that camaraderie and sense of community. And it, it's just a wonderful experience. You guys are going to have a blast. Now, this will also be uh, one of the first times that Wendell will be seen in the wild. So we're going to have some Wendell sightings uh, out in Oregon. And we need to figure out a few games for us all to play together. Um, Wendell, you got any ideas of the things you want to make sure that we all play? Half-Life 1. <laughs> Half-Life 1? Okay, that, that's on the list. I, I don't think I have it now. We, we can get you a copy of that. It's, it's, it's easy to come by, um, uh, and it's cheap. Battlefield 1942, they're doing a tournament. Oh, really? The old school? Yeah, and I need a team, so come on, guys. Huh. I haven't played that in a long time. That's actually... I mean, I still probably my favorite one. That one and what was the twenty one forty two or something? The was it was that what it was? Twenty one the the new the modern one? I don't know. Yeah, that but was yeah. It, something like that. Yeah, forty two was the game. I mean, yeah. everything since then to me has just been awful. Wendell, are you any good at that one? Nope. No. <laughs> well, cool. That's two of us. It suck. We'll be great. <laughs> When Wendell does have natural aiming abilities, and I, I can I can vouch for his abilities at shooting through walls in Half Life One. So anyone who gets in line for Half Life One is uh, going to have a lot of fun when he gets his hands on what the, the glue on is the no that's the wrong gun. Which one is it? The, the Tau um, Cannon. The ta <laughs> <laughs> I did pick up Garden Warfare, so now I have it. I haven't really played it much. So I don't really have anybody to play with. But you've been talking about this game for a long time. I was scared away by the cartoony graphics, even though at the same time I I grew up playing cartoony games like Mario Kart and stuff. So I think we probably need to play some some Garden Warfare. Absolutely. What what's your uh, favorite to play? I see. I've only played it like twice already. Um, I, I think I prefer playing the garden stuff, like sunflowers oh and whatever. Oh my god, just, you're as bad as honey. <laughs> I, I got tired of the whole zombie thing a long, you know, a while back, and I was like, I don't want to be zombies anymore. I've, there's too many zombie games out there, so I'd rather. I mean, how how often do you find a game where you can play? As a, like you said, a sunflower or a plant. So I'm, I think I'm going to stick with the the sunflowers. Do you, do you prefer the uh, the zombies? Well, I, I like the uh, all star in the zombies. Yeah, the, I like that's the, the big guy. The run and tackle is really cool. But then again, I also like the chomper in um, the plants because I'm running around the whole time on Mike yelling, "Feed me Seymour." <laughs> 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 we have like we we actually probably have a few musical theater people in in the audience out there. So if you got that joke, I'll uh, I'll buy you a pizza if I ever meet you in real life. <laughs> I collected PDX I, land. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> come up to PDX land. Tell Logan, hey, I know what that meant, and he's gonna buy you a pizza there. <laughs> I've gotten myself into some. Oh God, no! <laughs> I think I okay. I'm gonna cut all this. That's that. See, this is the benefit of not doing it live. <laughs> I can I can just cut all this. I'll probably leave it in anyway. Uh, so let's talk about Sapphire for just a minute, Ed. Okay. Now, um, Sapphire tries to. Well, I mean, you try to, and Sapphire also tries to support a lot of the smaller events like this. 
Um, and, and what's the general philosophy behind the, the reasons that you support so many LAN parties? I don't see a lot of other vendors at LAN parties. Well, the, there's the marketing reason and then there's the fun reason. Okay, let's do yeah. the fun reason first. Let's skip marketing for a minute because I do marketing way too often. Yeah. I, I'm a gamer. I've been a gamer forever. I love PC gaming. I love PC gamers in general. I just I love spreading the fun of all of this. And I'm in a position now where I get to do this, dude. I get to go to places, play video games, be Santa, and get paid. What is a cooler <laughs> job than that? So, so when I got this opportunity, I found a way to take what I love to do and find a way to also do good marketing. At the end of the day, all these video cards we make, the entire Radeon lineup is for one thing. It's for video gaming. <laughs> Okay, if you're word processing, you don't need a $200 video card. If you're, if you're doing anything practically except gaming, you don't really need a $200 video card. So if it's about gamers, we've got to get in with the gamers. We, and I don't want to just be one of those companies that does lip service to gamers. And what I mean by that is, I gotta always find something to do with my hands. I never know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I do radio, I'm not used to video. I've got a face for radio, not, not for video. And I, I, we didn't wanna be the company that just, oh look, we sent some t-shirts. Oh look, we sent a video card. No, it's not just that we sent, we came to do it with you. I want them to understand we we want to be a part of the community. We are a part of the community because we're gamers too. A lot of us at, at Sapphire are, and so it, that's our philosophy: is let's get out to these LAN events, let's get in with the gaming community, show them that we're serious and legitimate. We're not making something and going, "Ooh, this is for gaming," and going to charge you a premium price. We're, we're, we understand what you want. You want good value. You want quiet. You want cool. And you want somebody that understands what it is gamers want. So that's you know, the philosophy. So some of the other uh, uh, vendors out there are probably going to get sick of me because I've been telling them, like, hey, you guys should check out what Sapphire is doing <laughs> and maybe consider doing something like that because as far as, you know, Tech Syndicate goes, that's the kind of thing that we really appreciate, and that's the kind of thing that we're going to tell our fans that we appreciate. That you know, they're all going to know that we appreciate it, and they're going to appreciate it too. So, yeah, I've been, I've been like, whenever they say like, "Hey, what events you got going on?" I'm like, "Well, you guys really need to, you know, skip on all these big ridiculous events, and maybe go to some of these, you know, like more niche events where you get to play with the gamers and expose yourself to the gamers, not in that way, but and, you know, like, and sit down and play some games with the gamers because we know that a lot of the people at these other companies and stuff they play games too." So I think they get so wound up, and that's something I appreciate about you guys. You, you do you have a lot of work to do as well. I mean, I'm sure, but it's it's just nice to sit down with you with the audience and with the community and play some games every now and then. Well, it, it's nice to do that. Plus, we get feedback. We get to find yeah. out what gamers do and don't want, and that's important. Um, we we've got now. I can't get into a lot of details. I'm sorry. I wish I could. You'd have to bleep out everything. <laughs> yeah, but we don't, we don't want to try that again. In the, in the video <laughs> from CES, well. that, there's so much stuff on the cutting room floor that nobody can ever see from CES, and I can't even go into any details, guys. Ed, can you go into any more details about any of the stuff that we weren't allowed to talk about no, before? No, I cannot. Oh, man. Well, what, I, what I can say is this. We've got something that's... I'm excited about it. That's all I can say. We've got something that I'm really excited about coming up that's for gamers and that's all i can say amd send us an email uh, maybe we can break some news or something i don't know it'd be, it'd be as soon as i can give you guys more details you're first on my list <laughs> awesome thanks man all right so uh, wendell do you have any questions for him i can't think of any i think you pretty well covered everything it's awesome though I'm really looking forward to it. So everybody, uh, stay tuned for our coverage uh, from PDX. Uh, be sure to let us know in the comments, especially over on the website where we actually read the comments. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see as far as PDX go. We're going to be making you know a PDX experience video, giving you guys the the full idea of what it was like. We're going to be uh, sitting down with Ed and talking a little bit. I uh, also want to say thanks to uh, Fractal. They're our other sponsor. We just signed them like yesterday, so thanks very much, uh, Fractal and Josh from Fractal. And we'll be if he's there, we'll be sitting down and talking with him as as well. It'd be cool if he's there, but. If not, we'll Skype him in or something. Uh, but we got a whole slew of content, and I'm sure you guys will be seeing more of Ed there. So if you have any questions for him in particular, share those. And while we're there, we can ask him. So, Ed, thanks very much for uh, for being on. We'll see you uh, next week at no PDX. No problem. Looking forward to it, guys. I'll see you then. Yep, take care. See you. All right.
So uh, we do have some contests going on right now on the website. Um, Tyler from Mayflower Electronics made a portable uh, uh, amp, headphone amp. So if you guys want a chance to win that, just head over to the website. And uh, he made this. Uh, Wendell, this is we've got to do this more often. He made this because our audience requested it. And th enough people were commenting that he was like, I'm going to make this. And he sat down and it, I mean, it's a it's a basic circuit that has a very clean, you know, like uh, it's a very, very clean audio amp circuit and a nine volt battery. And it's small and portable and all that sort of thing. So there it is. There's that. Also, these new um, we got some new Burning Earth shirts. We've got some new wash shirts coming in, too. But um, they are so soft. They just came in today here at the office. And these Tribaland tri shirts are so soft, and they get sort of a distressed look with the uh, print. So those are on the on the site. Also, uh, Wendell, we've sold like 80 of um, of the design of the month with this beard thing. That beard <laughs> is the best investment you've ever had. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, so there's going to be a lot of people running around with this shirt. It doesn't have any context. You guys are awesome out there. Uh, remember, this, this shirt is only going to be available until the end of the month. We print it on the 15th, and then we print it at the end of the month, and then we're done. We might bring it back in like an, a year, but design of the month is like exclusive for like at least a year. Maybe maybe never. I don't know. It may never come back. The crazy thing is that this was a present, and it's like, wow, this is crazy. I just don't even understand what's happening. And it's like, hmm, <laughs> yes. Goofy thing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is not technology, but it's fun. Uh, just to talk about the Icelandic bankers who created a lot of the crisis over there, they're going to prison. And the Supreme Court, uh, they, they up, upheld the, the, the district court in uh, Reykjavik's decision to send these bankers who were screwing the people to jail. That's awesome. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. That, that's not technology, but we need that kind of thing all over the place. I mean, those guys got caught eating babies and they're going to jail. All right. Uh, we we talked well, about not, the anthem. Go ahead. I, I mean, the the Icelandic economy was really really damaged by this. I'm not yeah. sure that the American economy wasn't also really damaged, and we're just not feeling the effects right away. So, I mean, things were pretty bad in Iceland there for a while. So this is really good to see this, and hopefully, it scares the people at HSBC who are apparently still trading trading with criminals. So I don't know. You know what they get? Two million dollar bonus. All right, <laughs> exactly uh, let's take a right. look at. Let's take a look at Anthem. Uh, we, we talked about them. This is just a follow-up from last week. Um, here's the funny part. They, they had the huge data breach. They're, they are like the number one provider of health insurance in the USA. Um, and they you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, all that stuff. Uh, they, they handle it. So um, 80 million people, um, you know, their sensitive data was, was, was stolen. It wasn't encrypted. This, this data was not encrypted. So their, their yearly, um, you, you know, they're, they have a huge yearly budget for IT security and, and uh, all that sort of thing. It wasn't encrypted, so... I, I don't even know what to say when a company that big has data like this that's not encrypted. So that's the follow-up on that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, so speaking of, of uh, stuff that's like not encrypted and dirty code, Google has this thing uh, where they they find some bad code or they find uh, you know a security hole, and then they tell the company about it. And their policy is that they'll wait, I believe it's 90 days, yeah, 90 days. And they'll give them 90 days to fix this glaring security hole. And then they'll tell the world, hey, guys, here's a security hole. There it is. And apparently they've been doing this with Microsoft and Apple because they've said, hey, guys, you have some major security holes here. We found them and we let you guys know you have 90 days to fix them. And now Apple and, I mean, and and Microsoft are complaining and screaming that Google has posted these things, like just posted the security uh, vulnerabilities right on their corporate blog. I think it's an interesting um, way to do business for Google because Google, I mean, they really, they're all over the internet and it's important that the internet um, is, is safe and secure. And it's their way to poke them and say, hey guys, move faster, fix things faster. We, we see the holes, we could fix it, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess I kind of think it's interesting that they're pushing others in the market to fix things quickly. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a symptom of like Google getting better and better at security and accelerating and then looking at other companies around them and saying, oh, you know what, why aren't these companies moving as fast as we are? Or if it's, if there's, you know, if there's a sort of genuine slowness even taking all the factors into account. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think Google is getting better 
at being Apple, then Apple is getting better at being Google. I think Google is winning that race. And I think that there are a lot of skeletons in the closet at Apple with their code. Uh, you know, I think web objects still powers the store or something, which is completely insane. <laughs> Don't they call uh, that Wobjects these days? They, 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 they just shortened I, it down to Wobjects. I just, I don't, and there's, uh, you know, the so there have been a whole bunch of security things lately, and we've talked about some of them, but let me try to put it in context for you. So it's like, you know, we're talking about Poodle and Heartbleed and, you know, all this stuff and, you know, open sources on fire and blah, blah, blah. No, today, as a matter of fact, there was a, a security update from Microsoft that said, oh, crap, oh, crap, computers that use Active Directory, it turns out you could remotely root them. You can remotely completely take them over them. And this, most of the time, these types of security flaws, it, it's two possibilities. One, the software itself, the plan for the software is flawed. And that's the one that's hardest to fix. And the second one is there's a problem with the implementation. The theory is good, but the actual implementation in the software has some bugs. And so like with SSL version three, the plan was flawed. And so there was no real easy way to fix it. With the uh, elliptic curve encryption where the NSA backdoored it, the plan was flawed and uh, probably shouldn't have trusted the NSA to come up with the random numbers. Um, so uh, the things where it's like a bug in the implementation, like the bash shell script thing was kind of a little bit of both. Um, those can be fixed really easily and really quickly. The security problem that just came out from Microsoft today where you can remotely compromise a computer and it's like, you know, sphincter pucker level nine uh, type security issue. Uh, that was an architectural <laughs> problem. And that architectural problem is a problem with the plan. And so those are impossible to fix. And so it's like, oh my God, open source doesn't work. Ah, no, it's here we see it in commercial software too. And, and, and that exists. So I think this is some of what Google is discovering because they've got really amazing tools for taking these things apart now. And so Apple doesn't care. Microsoft cares some, but you know, Microsoft has this uh, disease of, at least they used to, of not invented here, which means if their programmers didn't come up with it, it doesn't matter. And the way that manifested early in the Windows lifecycle was they tried to do their own TCP stack. And that failed so spectacularly that they abandoned that and used BSD's TCP stack with Windows 2000. They were like, we're going to do TCP and we're good at that. It's amazing. And then they did TCP and Windows <laughs> NT. And that was so bad, they were like, oh, God, let, no. Let's put the BSD <laughs> TCP stack in Windows 2000. That's why Windows 2000 has copyright University of California, the regents of the University of California in the thing, because they were like, well, let's use BSD's TCP stack in Windows. I mean, that's just the way that it is. So, Have you... Uh... Have you seen the time, Wendell? Uh-oh. It's already Rant 30. I've already used it up, but uh, it's Rant 30. It is Rant 30. I'm going to preface this Rant 30 by uh, bringing up an article we mentioned last week. If you look at the Samsung Smart TV's terms of service, there is a phrase, and it is a very interesting phrase. It says, please be aware that if your spoken words include personal or uh, other sensitive information, that information will be among the data captured and transmitted to a third party through your uh, use of voice recognition. So if you use the Samsung uh, you know, smart features on the smart TVs, they're capturing everything you say. We, we found out that last week. Now here is why this is Rant 30. According to the DMCA uh, takedown, whatever, the DMCA uh, rules or whatever, if you modify your system to either disable those smart things that your know, voice recognition or whatever, if you tamper with the stuff, you could be charged with a felony. Now, there have been no counts of anyone being charged with a felony yet, but the way this works is that inside the Samsung TVs, they have taken some technological measures to make sure that you are unable to steal content, pirate content. And if you do any modification to the safeguards that are in place, you are in violation of the DMCA, whatever, and you could be charged with a felony. And in order to get to the voice recognition, you're going to have to tamper with that stuff. So if you basically, if you modify the hardware or try to mess with the software on your TVs, you could be charged with a felony, according to the way the law is written currently. That's ridiculous. You, you buy something and it's not even yours. You can't. What kind of place do we live in? I guess that's sort of Apple's business policy. You buy, you buy something and you don't really own it. You still, it still belongs to Apple. It's like you're renting it. So anyway, 
The TLDR on this is don't buy a Samsung smart TV. In fact, most of the smart TVs out there on the market, stay away from them. The smart TV was like a really good idea, but all the different companies are completely ruining them because they're greedy. They, you know, the whole idea of selling someone a television, making a few dollars and then moving on to the next customer is a thing of the past. All that's a thing of the past. The new money-making scheme is data harvesting. So they want to get their devices into your home, even if they get them into your home at a loss, I doubt they're going to do that. They're going to charge the regular price and then they're going to continue to stick their hand in your pocket over and over again. It's like a string in your pocket and they just sit there through the television, just pulling them the money out. So that's how it's going to work. It, now, if you, if you know, for, I, I don't know why I even have to make this argument. Shame on you for even thinking this way. What is wrong with you? Something is broken. You're broken. Stop thinking this way. But if you're thinking this way, and it's like, well, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to use voice recognition, then yeah, I mean, that might need to be streamed somewhere that, you know, some, but the recognition actually has to happen. And if in the thing that I intend for voice recognition, something gets sent accidentally, that's what they're talking about. It's not that they're data mining, and it's not that they're trying to be evil. It's like, well, okay, actually, I've got an example of them being kind of evil. And that is from this article, uh, people that were using the Plex Media app to stream movies from their computer to their television, had the television insert its own ads in the middle of the stream. This has nothing to do with Plex. This is just a TV being smart and saying, oh yes, you're streaming movies. Let me give you some ads from Samsung. <laughs> now, now so, yeah. let, let's reiterate this here so everyone can be completely clear on this. They weren't watching movies using a Samsung service. They weren't watching movies using any third-party television service. They weren't watching movies that were even outside of their own house. They were simply streaming movies from their own media device. And these are movies that they have. Like if you have an MP4 and it's on a NAS or on a different computer and you're streaming it to your TV, they were inserting advertisements into that. Just interrupted. And a bunch of people reported this and apparently it was a Pepsi advertisement that played every 20 or 30 minutes. And you know, some people was like, yeah, I've been watching my own media, like my own MP4 file, you know, stuff like that. It's being inserted into my own stuff. And it's happened six times today. That's what one of, one of the you know people out there said. Plex Media came out there. The spokespeople from Plex Media said, like, we have nothing to do with this. We are not advertising to our people. This seems to be something that's happening with the Samsung smart TVs exclusively. And then, of course, Samsung jumped in, of course. And, and I said, of course, twice. Well, of course they did. And they said, we are aware of a situation that has called some smart TV users. Yada, yada, yada. It's, it's in uh, Australia. And they said that uh, it's an accident. And they apologized for the inconvenience that that may have caused. And here we are in Australia again, and Australia seems to be a great testing place to see if people yell and scream. So here is where I'm going to go with this. I think that Samsung was working on this technology because, of course, they, 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 you can see that they have this insane mindset where they're like, after they sell a device, they want to continue making money from that individual. So not only are they going to harvest the data, but they also, we can just inject ads. Let's just try this. It's a smart TV. And since we have a connection and it's on our server, we can inject ads all day long. So... I think they're experimenting with this ad injection thing, and I think accidentally it got turned on on a broader scale and it wasn't ready yet, and it was like, oh, shit, it's turned on. Oh, no, a bunch of people have seen it already. But I think that they're kind of probing and testing these things behind the scenes because it's stuff, I don't think it would just happen unless they were either testing it, unless they're just completely incompetent, and I can't imagine any way that it would happen like this unless they were working on something or some similar technology. So I think that they're thinking about doing this and Australia would be the perfect place to test it because that's just where they everything again everything will kill you in Australia including the TV and the politicians and everything else so people are used to it over there the tough <laughs> they have to be and, and while it's not likely that you would be charged with a felony for modifying your own television if you were to go to the internet and look for information about how to do that there's a strong disincentive for you know tinkerers like me to post information about that because it's like oh i'm in samsung's radar now and they're like oh we need to take this down because we don't agree with this it doesn't matter if it's just they'll just you know whoever has the most money wins yep so that's the rant 30 again tldr smart tvs are not the way to go if you get a smart tv do not connect it to the internet you can use it on your local network but uh, i'm not even sure if all of them will work that way i don't have a television set I'm still kind of like build my own little box and hook it up to a projector if I want to watch something or just read a book. I don't know. 
Yeah. Think about it in terms of like, you know, the Raspberry Pi is a, is a reasonably powerful computer. It costs $35. If you're buying a $1,000 television, is it worth Samsung's time to install a $35 uh, add-on to the television that basically works against you to extract more revenue from you? I mean, if there's a monetary incentive that they'll get more than $35 of value out of doing this, then they totally will. And whether or not it's the TV passively monitoring for marketing data or actively spamming you with advertisements or whatever they can get away with, that's what they'll do. Yep. So you move over to uh, the UK now for a quick mention of the GCHQ. We don't talk about them nearly as much as we talk about the NSA or anything like that. But I think we should yes. go over and take a look at them. So um, right now, uh, the some of the courts in, in, in Britain have said that the GCHQ's uh, collection of data and basically working in the dark behind the citizen's back is unlawful and has been for seven years. So I, I guess this is not a definitive thing yet, but it's interesting that um, that, that, that has been it's, it's, the judgment. Been condemned as being against human rights. Now, I don't, I don't think this goes far enough because the reality here is that GCHQ is not technically collecting information on British citizens. I mean, there are, I guess, in some cases, but the real problem here is that, you know, the GCHQ will have an agreement with the NSA or Belgium or Norway or somebody, and it's like, hey, you give us your data on our citizens, and we'll give you our data on your citizens, and then that way we're not directly collecting information on each other's citizens, and that's okay, because that's how we operate in this day and age, because we're, you know, we're all about finding the loopholes in the law. And so this, I don't think, goes far enough to really close those sorts of loopholes. But it's, it's nice that the, the European court has said that, you know, this is against human rights, natural human rights. That's a good start at fixing this kind of a problem. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're proposing limited safeguards. So they're not even saying that they should stop everything entirely. And the GCHQ is completely opposed to even limited safeguards. They're like, no, 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 we want to... We want to go and walk around their homes and like look through their stuff and walk in on them while they're in the bed and like, you know, cuddle up next to them. And we don't want anyone telling us not to do that. We want to do whatever we want. We want to watch what they see on the on the television, watch their internet browsing habits. We want to watch all that stuff. And, and we don't want anyone to say stop or we don't want anyone to, to be like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. That makes us uncomfortable. We don't want to be uncomfortable. So that's kind of the GCHQ's point. I should all that again in a, in, in a GCHQ accent. Now, that would make me... Um, quite uncomfortable. We do not want to be uncomfortable. We want to be able to rummage through all things data. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> it um, I knew a guy in college that was just completely obsessed with downloading anything. Like, it didn't matter what it was. It was like, oh, the super site? Oh, let's download that. Oh, you know, shareware.com? <laughs> let's download that. And then it was like, he discovered pirated uh, software uh, sites. Oh, and it's like, oh, let's just download everything. And it's like, have you, this is a virus. Have you even looked at this? It's 600 megs of virus. And he's like, <laughs> ah, no, I just want to download it. And it's like, what is wrong with you? This is whoever, what, whatever has gone wrong uh -huh. with, with him has gone wrong with these government officials. It's the same sort of hoarding thing. It's, it's a digital hoarding complex. There needs to be, man, that needs to be like a, 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 an illness that you can be diagnosed with. Hmm. I, you, you know, it is I a thing. I would not be surprised. Mark my words, because here in the U.S., They've got this thing that says, you know, if, you, if your email on a server is more than 180 days old, it's considered abandoned and it doesn't need a warrant. I think what's happening, is, and, you know, mark my words, somebody five years from now is going to look at this and be like, oh, my God, he called it. Uh, what's happening is these intelligence organizations are making copies of all your stuff, putting it in a drawer for six months, and then rifling through it. And they're like, oh, that's totally okay. We're, it's, you know, you abandoned it. And it's like, I didn't know that you made a copy of it. I, didn't, I would not have abandoned it had I known you made a copy. But this, this is like the twisted logic that we're dealing with, with from these people. Well, speaking of privacy tools, let's move on over and take a look at uh, GNU PG or GPG. It's better than the old PG because it's the GNU PG. Anyway, that's a terrible pun. Um, <laughs> this, this has been funded. And um, I'll let you go ahead and explain what this is. But, but, but crowdfunding took care of this. And, uh, GNU Privacy Guard. So this is pretty much one guy and, that's been doing this. And he was really sort of strapped for cash. And, you know, sort of a massive flood happened at the last second and he got a grant. And, you know, for a while, the German government was funding him to, to do to develop this. And this you guys may have heard of pretty good privacy. You know, that was the stuff, the software that Snowden was using to communicate. Well, GNU PG 
is uh is is kind of like pretty good privacy the the gpg is a play on pgp so ah funny haha um and so the GNU privacy guard is a complete and free implementation of the open pgp standard uh you know uh and it allows one to encrypt and sign data and communications and has versatile key management and we can be reasonably sure that it's not been backdoored by any government or anything like that so it's really sort of important for an open and free society that this uh, this is uh, this funding has taken place because this guy, I mean, honestly, we should give him props for sticking in there because he's like, I haven't really been making any money on this, and I could actually have a real job, and I don't even know, and now he's got enough to hire a developer <laughs> to help him, so this is good. That's this nice. Is really good. Yay, humanity. So, yay. All right, let's uh, let's run over to Wales, shall we? We've been all over the world so far in this episode. Well, we've been mostly in the silly English-speaking countries so far, but all right, so. In Wales, there are uh, some groups that are putting Wi-Fi on sheep and badgers and letting them roam free to bring connectivity to rural landscapes. Oh, hey there, Logan, Wendell. But yeah, I basically had to pull the wool from over my eyes to see that this is legit. Sheep with Wi-Fi. Only makes me wonder. Are the ISP is going to be aware if you're doing something bad. <laughs> There's going to be digital hotspots everywhere. So I guess the general idea here, and the thing I want to talk about this, I don't even actually want to talk specifically about this article. What I want to talk about, and I want to hear some of your feedback in the comments, is what do you guys think about the idea of having you know, Wi-Fi hotspots everywhere? I mean, anywhere that there is a spot where they could put something that's either solar-powered, water-powered. Uh, a lot of times when you go out into, the, you know, in, into nature, there are different devices that are, that are there. You just don't see them. There's some devices taking water samples or some devices doing whatever, just that. They want to attach Wi-Fi to all kinds of things. So the sheep will have you know, like, what, like collars on that it will give them information about the sheep and all that sort of thing, but it'll also give them information or also be able to broadcast Wi-Fi. I guess that could be difficult if it's like attached to a badger and the badger's like roaming around. You have to chase the badger with your phone if you're trying to like text someone or something. But I, I guess it's better than nothing. <laughs> Do you guys want Wales Wi-Fi in the have, I predict Wales is going to have an Android problem because I'm pretty sure that Android do dream of Wi-Fi connected sheep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He should, he should change his book name. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, Wales is a, is kind of a hot spot for Blade Runner activity, anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> now we know you why. You got to do something to stave off the boredom. I mean, there's nothing else to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they look real though. They do look real. Anyway, <laughs> but they but you have to pay top like, I'm imagining like a Terminator scenario with the Badgers. It's like there's the Arnold Schwarzenegger Badger that's like, come with me if you want internet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, there's probably a Badger pun in there somewhere, but I don't want to make it. All right, let's move on and talk about um, some, some augmented reality stuff. So um, a team at some place, I've forgotten where already. Uh, <laughs> I'll just play the video. So th there's a, um, where's the team from? Does the augmented reality pioneers? Uh, I don't know. It's in it's in here somewhere. I always feel bad if I forget the name. Anyway, they've created an augmented reality um, system. Right now, it's very crude. But what it does is it pulls on a database of advertisements and um, logos and blurs them out in real time in real life. And it's a bit crude as it is now. And it it, it kind of has a few moments where it does and doesn't work. But it it could be made to work. They could make it faster. They can. They can tailor it. They can make it. Uh, they could basically make it smaller and faster and better, um, and then integrate it into some future technology. And well, wait, this this is a new article, but this is actually from 2013, and we covered this in 2013. Did we? Because uh, this was a fake video that was like, Google Glass is going to do this, and I'm like, Google Glass doesn't do this because Google Glass doesn't cover your full field of vision. And so now that with like Microsoft's thing, it's more appropriate because it does cover your field of vision. But this video was a is actually over two years old. Well, this one was published on January 18th, 2015. Hmm. This video here. Interesting. Well, if it's real, it'll be something interesting. All right. Moving right along then. Uh, Elon's, uh, Elon Musk's Hyperloop. We, we talk about him possibly, possibly too much. I imagine some people are like, Shut up about Elon Musk. He's doing a lot of cool things. So his, his Hyperloop, Hyperloop uh, now has a... It, 
explain go what ahead, Hyperloop is first. Uh, uh, well, Hyperloop it's a, is a uh, a cross country super high speed bullet train. It's sort of an ambitious plan from Elon Musk to connect the east and west coast by a super high speed, completely enclosed uh, bullet train. So he's received uh, some initial funding. Eight point five million dollars um, has has come in, uh, and he needs. He's, he's probably going to. Well, I guess plans for eighty million dollars in funding uh, later in the year. He's going to do a round of you know fundraising. But anyway, yeah, there's some there's some money, and there's a huge. I mean, I, I guess this is it's probably going to happen basically, because if he's eighty million is not nearly enough to make this happen. It'll take a, probably a couple billion, but I think he's going to make it happen. That's what I think. Anyway, there's. No real news here, other than the fact that he's putting, he's getting some money going and putting it towards this. Yeah, that was cumbersome, <laughs> but because it's it's kind of non-news, but it kind of is news because a lot of, it's been a thing for a while that he said, "Hey, I want to make the hyperloop. I want to make the hyperloop. I'm going to make the hyperloop." And now he's got a chunk of change, so not much, but it, it'll work. This is a funny article. Probably should have done this earlier in the in the program because it's silly. Uh, Native Americans have been blocked uh, from Facebook because they're using their indigenous names. And Facebook thinks that their indigenous names are fake. And uh, I think one of the Facebook people was quoted as saying, Oh yeah, well all you Native Americans can go back to India if you don't like it. That's what they were quoted as saying. Someone from Facebook. That really happened. Wow. <laughs> no, that so didn't really insensitive. Happen. That didn't really happen, but yeah. That's, I think it's really funny. They're, they're ridiculous. I don't know. I'm very anti their their real name policy. I think it's a terrible invasion of privacy. Anyway, that's my opinion. Go ahead. So <laughs> Microsoft, let's go ahead and take a look at Microsoft. They've got this crazy deep learning thing going. They've uh, been working on stuff over in Asia, and they've hit a milestone. They say that their deep learning is now better than Google's or um, Apple's or anybody else, and. They have been able to their their AI. A lot of a lot of people at Google and everyone else, they want their AI to be able to recognize objects in the real world. Like look at this and be like, oh, it's a tech syndicate mug with the cool raise the world logo. That's what I, I know what that is. Well, they show it a series of pictures, and finally, the AI has been more accurate than a human being at identifying things in pictures, for the first time. So that is pretty interesting, and it it puts them ahead of some of the competition unless they have some secret stuff that we don't know about but you know microsoft right now is kind of flexing their muscle and saying like hey we want to hire more people who can program this stuff and i know a lot of people who are in this field normally look at other companies but we can do this too and we want you to come work for us and we've got some cool things happening and uh and for the first time our stuff is is better than than human um as, as far as recognizing stuff goes See, know. this is the part that I don't understand because it was my understanding that Microsoft laid out laid off a huge number of their people that were working in just this type of R and D, and so who's left? I mean, I want to know what the what the real story here is because it seems like a piece of the puzzle is missing. Because you know, mm -hmm. when Nadella took over um, Microsoft R and D, this was one of the things that shut down. So this might be a question for Barnacles. Yeah, we, we could have to. I wonder if he'd be allowed to talk about it or even know much about it. Or uh, Timmy Tech, he's still he's still at Microsoft. He might know some more about it as well, because Barnacles is no longer there. But Timmy is. Maybe we could talk to Timmy and see what he knows. Timmy, if you know anything, let us know in the comments. That'd be cool. If you're if you're watching, you better be watching. Is is this smoke? Because let's not. I mean, let's not forget that Microsoft is a company who uh, made up the Courier tablet, and the closest you're going to get to a Courier tablet now is hot gluing two Surface threes together. They make up what they want, and then hopefully it'll come to fruition, but um, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what's happening in the uh, EU. So uh, this is another Microsoft article. Microsoft's mobile Outlook app apparently does not use Microsoft servers. They're hitting third-party servers. They've, they've sort of they decided to farm that out. So if you're using the app and you're in the EU, it's going to a third-party server, and that is a huge security concern because this, this is sensitive stuff. It's your, it's your Outlook account. And uh, Zoltan, uh, he posted this in the forum, so I want to say thanks to him for posting that. But I don't know. What do you think the, the overall implications of something like this could be? The, uh, if you're a member of Parliament, the IT Commission in the, uh, the Parliament has said 
don't use it. Don't install it. If you've installed it, uninstall it because this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And Microsoft's like, no, this is totally fine to send data to third party servers. And it's like, no, no, actually, it isn't. I mean, come on. No, this is not okay. Uh, maybe for non sensitive types of data, but well, I don't understand why Microsoft, a company as large as Microsoft, would do something like this. Wouldn't it even be cheaper to use the. Yeah, why wouldn't it be cheaper to use their own servers in the first place? I mean, do they do they? It's like everybody uh, was busy. We hired some company to deal with this. It's like <laughs> really the, a company as large as Microsoft is going to farm out. <laughs> Let's just move on to the next article. I can't. I, I can't even. I'm like a freaking white girl right now. I can't even. All right. <laughs> Um, BitTorrent partners uh, with RapidEye Studios to produce exclusive TV shows known as BitTorrent Originals. This is very interesting. So how would you guys like an original television show delivered through BitTorrent? And if you're thinking with a modern mindset, a lot of people want to watch the content, you're probably going to end up paying for your content with brand integration stuff. So you can basically make a television show, distribute it through torrents, and just have brand integration uh, take care of the rest because you can guarantee a massive audience. The thing that uh, the BitTorrent people are saying about are saying is that their audience is larger than Netflix or anybody else out there. The torrenting audience is the big. That's that's like the big audience, and that's mostly that audience was mostly created through the distribution problem. So these guys are going to bypass the distribution problem. And be like, look, everybody is getting to watch our TV show, or or it wouldn't be a TV show. It would be their BitTorrent original. And uh, we're making money, and everyone's watching the video. That's a very, very. I, I, I can't believe I didn't think of that first. So that's bigger. They're bigger than Amazon Prime. They're bigger than Netflix. They're bigger than Hulu. I'm not sure. I didn't really um, figure out what TV shows they're going to be making. But I mean, if it's if they hire good writers and good cast and all that stuff, it could be really interesting. I've got it. Mm. They need to do a darker reboot of Murder, She Wrote with Angela Lansbury. But they need to cast a sort of a, a younger Angela Lansbury that's not quite as old. But the twist is that Angela Lansbury is a serial killer. And she either dupes people into committing the murder or brainwashes them into thinking they committed the murder. And she's actually the one that's killing everybody. Because what other explanation is there that there's a, you know, a geriatric retiree that's wandering the country and there's nothing but a trail of dead bodies behind her? That would be a show <laughs> that would pay to watch. We can call it Murder, She Blogged. To update it a little bit, you know. <laughs> no, so I tweeted about this and somebody tweeted me back and they said, Murder, She Wrought. <laughs> yeah. You get a writer credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a quick mention on uh, Mozilla's uh, new policy. They decided to sort of make their app store or their add on, I guess, their add on system a walled garden. Now everything has to go through an approval process. They're saying it's going to be for safety and that sort of thing, but it does make their. Once Wild West app, what well, not app? I keep saying app. It's a um, add-on thing. Um, now a walled garden, and that's kind of sad. But I don't know. Let me know I what you like guys how think. Transparent Mo Mozilla is with it. I mean, they're very transparent about what's going on. I don't. I really don't see a downside to this, and I looked for one. So if you, I mean, you're a developer. If you have an app, if you have an extension, and there's a downside, let me know what it is, and we'll cover it. I guess the, my, my only worry is that, you know, Mozilla, the power will go to their head and they'll start just denying things that they think are lame or no good, even if they're safe and secure applications or add-ons. That's the thing I'm worried well, about, because if they start treating get, it like a walled garden, it, it may exclude things. I yeah. I, I think it's more about signing and, and security than, than features. Hmm. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I, I'd always, I, maybe I just worry too much when, when things are walled gardens. I like Wild West style things. I mean, Steam's a wild garden, a, wall, a walled garden, and uh, I know, you know, uh, Gabe Newell has been saying that he wants to make it less of a walled garden, and I'm actually looking forward to that. But some people are like, no, no, we like the wall, the walled garden curated type feel. So I don't know. It's just opinions. There's, there's, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. All right. Um, what else news? What other news do we have that we can mention here? Um, Sprint is saying that Title Two is probably going to be okay. That's an interesting article. 
They're saying that they think that, uh, you know, people are still going to invest because, you know, everyone's been yelling and screaming that no one's going to invest under Title II. And uh, Sprint came out and said, we think it'll be okay, and we think people are still going to invest under Title II. Doesn't mean they're 100% for it. They're just... The narrative that they're presenting is a bit different than everyone else's narrative in, in the game. So the that, the, that's cool. The term that they used in their press release was that they do endorse Title II, which is not like they're cheerleaders for Title II, but it's it's more than apathy. And so I was very surprised that they actually said that we are going to endorse Title II. That's pretty big, I think. Yep. All right, let's talk about a little bit of hardware stuff. Um I don't want to run too long on time, so we'll go kind of quick here. But uh, Visa has published their new uh, DisplayPort 1.4a standard, so we're, we're getting ahead in the world, uh, and that's going to support up to 8K. And that's, uh, I mean, I guess there's some 8K televisions out there, so I guess we'll we'll see it being used for that. I'm not sure if we'll see any 8K monitors coming out anytime soon. It'd be nice if we saw some 8K monitors with some epic scaling. That's a lot of pixels, and I'd like to have access to all those pixels. But the theoretical bandwidth is 32.4 uh, gigabits per second. That's awesome. You know that, what's that, that would also be mm -hmm. that you can run more than one monitor, more than one 4K monitor off of one cable. Yeah. That. Well, see, the thing <laughs> is, right? Even, even if you're even if you're running one, if you're running one 4K monitor, you could you could drive that at 120 hertz. So you could do some extreme, like 120 hertz gaming with FreeSync and G-Sync and all that stuff right around the corner, that won't be as big of a deal. You'll be able to get nice, smooth uh, playback with a, a lower refresh rate, but higher refresh rate's always better. Um, and, uh, you know, if you if you want to dumb it down to 60 hertz, you'll be able to power a few of those things. So that'll be nice. Um, should we talk about the whole Visa thing that we're working on, or should we just make that a totally separate secret video? We, we should, should probably make, make that a separate that. thing. I have yeah, to get but, some hardware. I've, I've got to pro procure some stuff from Taipei. We're working on some super secret stuff, guys. That has to do with Visa, FreeSync, G-Sync, OMG, barbecue sauce, WTF type stuff. Yeah. <laughs> let's just, uh, yeah, let's see what else is done. <laughs> the Ubuntu phone has, has, has come out, and uh, it's, out, it's, it's sold out twice on the first day. I... I was curious about one of these, um, but, you know, Ubuntu, I've been, I don't know, I don't, I'm worried that it'll have the same spyware that, the, the, these guys, uh, Canonical has been so into money, and they've been so into, I don't know, I, they've been worrying me, they, they don't seem to, to fit in with the rest of the, the, the Linux and open source and free software ethos, I don't know, they're, they're, I they're try different. This. Yeah, if somebody can, if there's some way to load this on a Galaxy S3 or a uh, Moto uh, Razer Max HD, I think uh, I think those are the two phones I've got laying around right now. If there's some way to load it on either one of those. Let me know, and I will be glad to deal with that and take it for a spin because I'd like to take it for a spin. It looks interesting. Don't want to buy the device, just want to take it for a spin. You know, I imagine since it is, I mean, it is Ubuntu, it is Linux. I imagine it'll be easy enough to. If they have any sorts of, I don't know, if they have any sort of spyware or anything like that, it'll, I'm sure it'll be easy enough to remove it. And their spyware is probably better than most other spywares out there, to be fair. But, so, it's probably not that big of a deal. I just, I'm just mad at them for what they did with their Unity and all that. You install GNOME 3 or KDE or something else and you're all, you're all good to go. All right. Well, um, just to be clear, this is, this is not the Ubuntu Edge either which is an actually a pretty good phone. This phone's pretty low end. I mean, it's it's a 960 by 540, four and a half inch display, a gig of RAM, eight gigs of internal storage. Uh, 1.3 gigahertz quad core, but you know, otherwise a pretty low end phone. Yeah, but it's gonna be pretty affordable and uh, you know, it'll, it'll give you a different environment. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. All right, AMD and Nvidia, they are both skipping 20 nanometer uh, as far as their GPUs go and uh, TSMC, is going to be throwing $16 billion into uh, their Fab Lab. Fab Lab! Yeah, so it looks like everyone's... The, the bottom line here is it looks like everyone's going to be moving to 14 nanometers for their next-generation GPUs, and that's going to be... That's going to be awesome. Well, possibly 16 nanometer, but I, I think it was 14 nanometer. I'm not 100% sure. We'll have to wait and see. So, NVIDIA has some huge announcement coming up in March, 
and uh, I don't I don't know what it is. Could be gaming stuff. Could be some new car technology stuff. Could be a new. I'm thinking it's going to be something that has to do with mobile. They said it's been it's five years in the making, and I don't know. There's all kinds of things floating around. Although it's, we're in like a time where there's like a lot of rumors about what's coming next, and not a lot of information. So we've got the new AMD stuff coming next, and Ed can't tell us anything about that because uh, AMD will send snipers to his house. And then we've got new stuff from NVIDIA on the horizon. No, no one can tell us anything about any of this stuff. It's sad. We've got FreeSync, and no one can give us a release date on that stuff. Come on. It's awful. <laughs> We're going to make <laughs> our own news about those things. Yeah, they're, we should... Oh, yeah. That's a sensational <laughs> news coming soon. We're going to get a lot of hits, and it's all going to be lies. But at least the people who are watching this will know. The rest of the internet that gets, you know, the reblogs and then goes crazy... We'll never know that we were lying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about a couple of gaming things and then uh, call it a night and go have a, a cup of hot. Wait, what about the science Ovaltine. article? Oh, the science I'm, article's I'm, exciting. What did I? What did I? Oh, I've clo- there it is. Found it. Uh, the uh, EM drive. So now they're saying the EM drive does work. Is that the yeah, science we article we're talking about? Yeah, we covered this twice now. Twice we have covered this, and it's like, is this crackpot science? I don't understand. And so uh, the EM drive is a method of propulsion that apparently uses radio waves, some type of radio waves, to produce thrust. So it's producing so, thrust without expelling the particles, which is sort of a big deal. And uh, yeah, the, well, most of the, the most of the community was like, "This was, is nonsense." Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and, well, and, and and everyone just kept saying nonsense. Was, it's uh, it's producing heat. And so it's heating the air, and the thrust is coming from the heating of the air. Well, the experiments have been repeated in a vacuum now, and there's still thrust. That just makes me scratch my head. (laughs) So you can use microwaves to propel yourself through a vacuum. So what other household appliances can we? So if you you put the vacuum in the fridge, can you still use the microwave to drive out? Figure that one out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't. Uh, I have. I have not had a chance enough to study the experiment and the results. Just the the results headline, and so I may read read this and be like, "Wait a minute, these people are charlatans." I'm sorry. Ah, so there's that disclaimer. Uh, but it looks really exciting. I mean, the idea of propulsion without expelling particles behind you, uh, you know, in space is really, really, really exciting. That we could be onto something. I mean, this could be something. This could be a whole new scientific discovery like the tech the the math and the physics that underpin this could be a huge deal yep yeah this is just, this article is uh, i haven't read it all either I, there's just there's a lot of proof uh you know and there's a lot of numbers here so all right interesting things on the horizon let's go ahead and talk about games um this is pretty exciting the warner brothers uh games not the whole entire catalog but some of the warner brothers games are now on good old games meaning you can get them drm free uh, Bastion is available right now, and you can get Bastion. If you haven't played that, it is totally worth the five ninety nine price tag. So that game's on there. The Mortal Kombat games, Fear, uh, some of the Lego games are on there. So, yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Uh, we do have a Good Old Games affiliate link as well. If you guys would like to use it, we get like a penny a year from Good Old Games. But we like to support them anyway because they are, you know, DRM-free. And that's nice. Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3 for five ninety nine. I might have to pick that up. Mortal Kombat 2 is still my favorite out of all of them. Out of all the Mortal Kombat games. And I haven't really played the, the new ones all that much. Just haven't had time. Wow. These are all pictures of... There we go. Picture of number 2. Um, and other video game nudes. I am really looking forward to Sword Coast. This, this kind of caught me off guard today. It's coming in 2015. You can already pre-order it, of course. But this game is made by some of the guys uh, behind... Every game you've ever heard of, uh, from Neverwinter Nights to, I believe there's some of the guys from from uh, uh, Baldur's Gate working on this. Uh, don't hold me to that. It's a Dungeons and Dragons based game, and here's the reason that, that, that this piqued my interest. So, it supports four player, uh, four I guess four member multiplayer, and there can be a dungeon master just like in um, oh, what's the game Neverwinter Nights, which I think is probably one of the best multiplayer RPG experiences to date. So this game will have a storyteller who is able to... Here's here's the part. Embark on a one-to-four-player adventure. 
So that that's going to be really awesome. I, I guess the storyteller will be able to go in and fill the dungeon with bad guys, make spawns, uh, give characters secret things, add treasure, you know, that sort of thing. Become the dungeon master. That's really cool. <laughs> If they do this right, and I can't see how they could screw it up, seeing as, you know, the team that's involved in this, it'll be really good. There's, there's like, a ton of games like this coming out. It seemed like the, the big developer or the big publishers kind of stopped making games like this, and then all these companies, you know, kind of went off on their own. They're like, you know what? We're going to make uh, Pillars of Eternity. We're going to make Ties of Numenera, which is a Torment game. We're going to make all these games that are very similar to the old Baldur's Gate-style uh, gameplay, Icewind Dale and that sort of thing, and uh, we're seeing them... I've seen them like crazy, so we know the audience wants it, even if the publishers don't know the audience wants it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all the gaming stuff. If you guys want more gaming stuff, go watch Wazd. Uh, yeah, it's not going anywhere, all you whiners and complainers. You very, very, very loud minority. It's don't not, feed the <laughs> trolls. I'm not. I'm done, I'm done with them. That's it. You guys just. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. All right. So um, yeah, that's it for today. I'm glad you guys watched. And I don't have any I don't have anything to say at the end here. I usually have like something pithy and I've got nothing. Oh, you, you, do you have anything? We should we should plug the Enterprise channel because I think I think the format maybe that we're going to have is we're going to do a, like a 5 minute overview so that like for the Linux videos it's so easy to go on for like 2 hours about Linux things. And because it's like I'm, you know, I'm on the command line in Linux. I'm manipulating the individual bits and in ones and zeros. And then two hours <laughs> later, it's like, look, I have made hello world. Isn't this amazing? We're not putting that on the main channel. So uh, what we'll probably yeah. do is put like a five minute thing on the main channel and be like, look at this amazing thing that you can have after eight hours of work. And then on the Linux channel, it'll be like, here's hours one through three. <laughs> here's hours four through seven. Yeah, we, we did create a bunch of uh, additional channels, and some people are like, I don't understand that from the marketing standpoint. And we don't care. That's something I don't think a lot of people out there understand, is we do not care. We do whatever we want to do. We that That's how it goes. We don't do anything for for clickbait. We don't do anything to, to try to get a million more subscribers or anything like that. We just have fun and do whatever we want. So we've got now we've got the hardware channel, we've got the, the tech enterprise channel, the tech Linux channel. It's just we have a lot of content and we're going to generate more content. And if we need to and if we can afford to, we'll hire more people to help us out with this content. But, you know, we don't want to flood the main channel with a million different things. So if you're interested in each one of those different things, enterprise gear, Linux gear, hardware, you know, we might end up making a shenanigans channel because we are always running around doing nonsense. And sometimes it's fun to see how that to live. as well. So, yeah, how to live. We have that. But. We'll probably have to hire a few more people to make it really, really work. But um, So if you guys want to these... see that, you better go sub to those channels. Yeah, sub Damn. to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's there are links the here this. on the screen somewhere. Just, and you're making me do all this extra. Things. I have to do all this editing now. All right, fine. I'll put the, I will put the links on the screen. There are people are... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. They're already there. Uh, there's just gonna be, it's going to be one link. It's going to go over to our website, and it'll have all of our different channels listed. And we're going to have to make a new post with all of our different channels, but it needs to happen. So that works. that's that's what you guys can and, click on. And we'll plug, we, if the if you want to see, we just posted, or getting ready to post, the ASRock 10 gig motherboard on the hardware channel. 10 gigabit Ethernet. And so 10 gigabit Ethernet is becoming in vogue. And that's kind of an enterprise thing. And that's kind of a high-end thing, but the motherboard is going to be on the hardware channel, but you may see some applications and special use for it on the enterprise channel. So this is actually pretty good. The, the hardware vendors will kind of like this because it's like, look, here's your hardware, and then here's us solving a problem with your hardware, which is what we're really interested in. We don't... The hardware is cool. The hardware is a means to an end to do cool stuff with the hardware. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to level with you guys. I've always really... I've not really enjoyed doing hardware reviews. That's the, I don't even... I feel like it's a... It's difficult for me to take a card and just play with it and benchmark it. What I want to do is I want to get in there and mess with it. I want to play games with it. I want to do some rendering on it and then just, you know, make a video about that. But everyone expects to know the, the basics. They want to know the, you know, the whole review. They want to know the benchmarks and all their favorite games and that sort of thing. So I don't enjoy doing that, but we do it just for you guys. So that'll stay there. We'll probably end up getting some more people to help us out with that. And then, you know, we can focus on what we excel at. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. I'm gonna we'll see you guys next week. I'm going to show you guys about jumbo frames and 10 gigabit Ethernet with Dell and Netgear equipment. So that's going to be fun. That's already shot. Lots, lots coming. And you don't you have an editor there now? Yep. So a couple days a week? 
Yep. Thanks to our tech support members who uh, have helped enable all these things. So, yeah. yes. And we could always use more tech support members. So if you were thinking about joining, please, for the love of God, join. Join now, please. Uh. <laughs> well, we ran the numbers on tech support and I was like, well, we're paying for one fourth of one employee. So not bad. <laughs> Maybe not even that. But Let's get it up to two fourths. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> not a half. Two fourths. Anyway. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. First, Amazon using drones to deliver your stuff and now sheep with Wi-Fi? I don't know. Are they sheepishly going to use this new technology to, I don't know, get some uh, drones delivering stuff over there in the farmlands over in Wales? I don't know. You order something? You know, the sheep in this case is not a lie, but the cake is still a lie, my friend. But then when you start ordering cakes via Amazon, now the sheep you know, have interconnectivity out there in the farm, in the farm country. You know, uh, what if the uh, drones drop it? You know, the, the cake smashes, and you're gonna get smashing cake. And then some guy's gonna come up with a r random rock band called Smashing Cakes, and then Billy Corgan's gonna get mad and sue, and then we're gonna have a uh, 